Hi, this is Sean, and today I wanted to share an experience with you of something that happened to me in December of 2008. Normally, people would refer to it as a Kundalini awakening, and to be honest, it's not something that I've shared with many people in my family, either in Canada or in Brazil, just my wife and my niece that we helped get through her bipolar disorder. So these are two people that I feel like really understand these things because they've had um, experiences of altered states of consciousness themselves. And so I feel comfortable talking to them. Uh, but the rest of the family, you know, forget it. And I think it's important to share with the YouTube community for people looking for things to do with Kundalini experiences and bipolar disorder because sometimes what happens is people are having a Kundalini awakening of some kind uh, which often involves different energies releasing inside you and um, you know you can start to have mental problems or psychosis of some type and be diagnosed bipolar so maybe some of the symptoms I'm going to tell you here have been part of your own bipolar experience okay you just weren't aware of it and it's pretty unusual stuff I mean we're in the West we're just not taught about this at all and even though I knew about it um, for me it even seemed stranger this experience than my psychosis my spiritual awakening that I've talked about in my other videos because when the awakening was happening I knew what was going on but when the Kundalini started happening it just felt like I, my body's been taking over um, and you'll see what I'm talking about as I get into the story now this all happened at this Vip Vipassana meditation retreat outside of Rio de Janeiro in the mountains there it happened in a mountainous valley very forest type of area very beautiful and on this retreat you're not allowed to uh, talk there's no talking and you're eating vegetarian food for 10 days and for me the talking part no talking that's easy but the vegetarian food whoo, that's tough um, and uh, you have to meditate 10 hours a day for 10 days straight that's how it works and you start meditating at 4 30 in the morning and you're meditating all day basically you're just taking breaks here and there every two hours you take a break or so and I'll get into the technique as I tell the story, okay? So here we go. Um, basically day one, I go there and the first day of meditation is to focus on your body parts. In particular, your nose. So all day on day one, you're just concentrating on your nose and the breathing that's going on in your nose. And the point is to simply help still the mind by concentrating on one particular area. And that went fine, except for the fact that I was in agony for most of the time because we've got to sit in a, a cross-legged position with no back supporting us. And even though we could move around a little bit, uh, it was still very painful because I'm not a very flexible guy. And I've done meditation before in the past, but I've always moved around. I've always had support in my back and things. and So this was particularly tough for me. Um, but concentrated on the nose all day, no problem. Day two and day three, we concentrated on the interior of our nostrils, and this really helps sharpen the focus of the concentration. So now, instead of focusing on your nose, you're focusing on like the air going in just the passage of your nose. So your concentration gets very specific. And that went fine, and, and I found I was continuing the meditative process as I was sleeping, too. I would, I would still be in a, in a meditative state. And then uh, day four, when I woke up, I kind of shook my head around a little bit and realized that, uh, you, you, know that you know that voice that's inside your head? Well, I didn't have that. It was empty, you know. And, and I went out to do a little stretching. I was moving my arms around just to sort of stretch out before the meditation. And then immediately I, I felt the sensation on my fingertips. I could feel the wind passing on my fingertips. So my senses were getting a lot sharper too. But not in a psychotic sort of way, just because you're just so quiet, you, you just pick up everything. The sounds in the forest and the, and the sensations on your fingers, this kind of thing. Um, but then in the meditation of the morning of day four, which would be from 4.30 to 6.30 a.m., uh, probably around six o'clock in the morning, I started to feel these very pleasurable sensations and and what I mean is like normally I, I meditate and I sort of slouch over a little bit my posture is not the best and I, and I move around a lot like I said and then all of a sudden I felt this pleasure in the bottom of my spine and and I felt this desire to sort of just really stretch up and stretch my spine as high as it could go and keep it straight only because it felt good to do that it was just a very pleasurable feeling and I, and I started meditating, you know, in the sort of this position. And then a little while later, 
I felt this love come from inside of my chest, sort of around the solar plexus area, down in this area a little bit, and out of this feeling, it just felt like love started coming out of the center of me, and it was coming from the inside, and, and it was like a pulsing feeling, like love, 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 the sensation of love coming from the inside of me, and honestly, it was an experience that I didn't even know really existed. I, I didn't know you could have this feeling. Um, and it was really overwhelming, and it really came for no reason whatsoever. I wasn't thinking about love, I wasn't thinking about relationships, nothing like that. And then this love arrived. It was very overwhelming, and I started crying, and crying, and crying, and crying, and almost to the point where I felt like I was going to break apart. I mean, it was that bad. But I, I tried to keep my voice down because there's 60 people meditating around me, and I've just gone off. I've completely lost control, in a sense. So I'm doing my best. And um, I just stayed there with my eyes closed and my head down, crying. And this love coming out of me, just joy. I was crying out of tears of joy. Um, and then with that love, after the love was gone, there was this burst of energy, of hot, hot energy that came from the same area. And, and I could feel it leaving my body in every direction. Just like this big firework, like boom, came out of me. Uh, and then, quickly afterwards, there was a sensation of almost cold fluids leaking out of my organs. Um, my liver and my stomach and my lungs all seemed to be vibrating and leaking out almost like a, a pleasurable liquid. It felt like this liquid was coming out of me in a very kind of cool, cold way, and these energies started to leave. This and and it was shaking the whole time, and crying and shaking, and all this. And and then I became very cold. And now probably the temperature there. It was raining. It was kind of cool. It would have been probably about 20 degrees Celsius, maybe 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But then I started to get really cold. So so cold that. I had to grab blankets that were with the guy next to me. I, I grabbed blankets because he had left. Everybody had left. I was the only one left in the room. Sixty of us meditating and everybody left and I was there. Um, and I grabbed the blankets and I put them around me. And then um, I, I was so cold that I felt the need to, to sort of come down and breathe into the blankets just to heat my body. And I was kind of nervous because it was such a powerful experience. I had to walk, I had to get to my bed, and I had to walk through a trail in the forest to get there, and I didn't know if I had the strength to make it. So I stayed in that meditation room where all this happened for a half an hour after everybody else left, I was still there. And don't forget, because there's this vow of silence, nobody's talking to me and nobody's helping me either. They, they just think, well, he's crying, this is common in meditation, you know. So I went to bed and didn't go for breakfast and just stayed there. And then uh, one of the helpers came in, an assistant, said what's going on and, and I told him and then he said, well, I should come back and meditate to, to help. And I was, I couldn't, I mean, I just didn't have the energy and I, and I waved him off. And then I asked him, you know, go talk to the teacher, the guide, see what they say, you know. And he goes and talks to the teacher and comes back and says, you should go meditate. And I just said, forget it, I'm, I'm not going to go meditate. And, and that's when I realized, you know, just like in my psychosis, even though these people were Buddhists, even though they had a strong spiritual focus, like they just didn't, they just didn't get what was going on. But what happened was, as I was laying in bed, um, feeling very weak, and then all of a sudden, uh, I had this vibration come on one side of me, this vibration on, on my ribs. And then, vroom, and this energy came out. Um, and with that, I saw, I, it was almost like a hallucination, a very strong bird of paradise just sort of went, boom, right in, right in front of me. To me, the subconscious communicates to us in images. And this bird of paradise told me that in some way, I've just been given a, a level of peace. And I felt good about that. And I, and I knew what was happening was special, even though it was difficult. You know? 